Alright, therapy. Okay. Good evening, and I love you. I am Heather Peterson Lockhart. I am the chiefess. It is the new moon in Taurus, a chance to manifest and seed our highest good. So, today I'm going to bring you an intuitive reading, and then I'm going to tell you a little story, and, uh, and then we're going to, um, I have a manifestation exercise that you can use this energy, you can use today to use this energy to bring in your highest good. Okay, so as always, let us take a few minutes and connect with our own selves, um, with everything going on around us, and bring a little quiet, conductive, compassionate connection. Are you ready? So this is our heart chakra bowl. If you would like to join me and you are seated in a chair, go ahead and put your feet flat on the ground. If you're seated in the ground, you can go crisscross applesauce and anywhere you be, go ahead and take your tummy, I love to rhyme, and bring your belly button forward. Bring your belly button forward, engaging your, low, your lower spine, getting your spine nice and straight, pulling your shoulders back, bringing your heart center forward. We're gonna close our eyes and open our hands. And the opening of our hands is symbolizing that we're open to new. We're open to allowing and receiving, yes? So go ahead and close your eyes. And we're gonna take a big breath in through our nose. And let it go out through your mouth. And in through your nose. And out through your mouth. And in through your nose. And out through your mouth. One more time. Big breath. In through your nose, all the way down to your belly button. And let it go out through your mouth. Wiggle your fingers and your toes with all that new air and that new possibility in your vessel. And now take your left hand and put it on your chest. Take your right hand and put it on your left. And say, I love you to your body. And then say, I love you to this planet. And then say, I love you to your higher power, to all that is, making it flow just so. And let's take one more big breath in through our nose. And let it go out through your mouth. And open your eyes. Taurus, we are still in the new moon energy, and this is a huge moon. Every moon is a huge moon. Every sign has its own energy that we are able to focus on and concentrate on and focus and, and allow that energy to impact our life, should we so choose. So I titled this little shin dig do to do. Welcome aboard the Taurus train because this is a this is a chance to get on board a whole new train and change your life, your actual day-to-day -day life. So Taurus season is about what you eat, what you drink, what you touch, what you taste, what you smell, your day-to-day -day life. Who are you touching? Um, how are you feeling? Meaning like, how are you feeling inside? And how does it feel to sleep in your bed? How does it feel to be in your house? How does it feel to be in your life? Are you enjoying? It's a Venusian sign. It's a Venus ruled sign. So it's very much about the pleasures of life. Now it can also be about the non-pleasures if that's where we're focused. And for many of us, myself included, if you've had some circumstances go down in the last few years that have been I don't want to say less than favorable because they're all favorable, but let's say uh, they've hurt circumstances that have 
rung your bell um, to the point that it's made, it shook your insides, right? And when that happens, you can develop a program of reaction. You can develop a program of creation, actually, where you're fearing what might happen. And in the fearing what might happen, you're calling it in. So we get on this really dangerous train of momentum with our thinking. Then we couple it with our emotion because when you think scary crap and you start to get scared inside, it doesn't feel good. And it can get really out of control really fast, especially in today's energy. So we can also do the adverse with that because the good news about Taurus season is if you are willing to get aboard the Taurus train, clean out some of that crap you've been thinking, allow some beautiful thoughts to plant, plant the seeds of beautiful thoughts, and then all you got to do is just water them every day. Just like a garden. We're going to plant these seeds and we're going to water it a little bit every day. And I'm going to teach you how to do that as we move forward. And then you're going to see that when you pay attention and pay energy and pay focus to what you want more of, you sure do grow it. See, that's exactly what's happening on Earth Day. We're growing a whole lot of plants that we don't even want in the garden. But we just think they're like, oh, those damn weeds, you know, or our parents say shit like that. That's how it works. Your parents say shit like, well, those weeds have always been there and we managed to work around them, so you're going to have to do the same. Did your parents talk like that? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and then we grow up with these really crappy programs um, of limitation, of thinking that it's normal for the weeds to strangle the beautiful plants in the garden. No, it does not have to be so. We get to choose to pull the weeds and water the seeds we desire. Did you know that you can actually just step over a seed, step over a plant that you don't want? When a thought pops in your head, you don't have to entertain it. You don't have to take it down the rabbit hole. You can just say, not today, right? Yes. So this is where we're gonna choose how we grow. And this moon, I chose this moon to, to give you a manifestation exercise and to teach you how this works because this moon is so focused on the senses. It's so about what you need. I'm sorry, what you smell, what you see, what you hear, what you feel. It's very tactile. And when you have a very tactile mm, energy system, it's easy to tune humans in because you can pay attention to what you see. You can pay attention to what you smell. You can pay attention to what you feel. We learned that real early. That stove was hot. Don't touch it again. That shit hurts, right? Well, we get old, er, excuse me, and then we start to run these crappy beliefs and we forget to pay attention to our senses because we get so busy in our brain with all the programming. And then it's funny because something feels some type of way. Oh, but we develop an override. We've got an override program that comes. Like we might be engaging in a way of thinking that makes us scared as shit, right? But then we've got the stupid ass program that comes behind it that we call logic and bullshit like that that says, well, this is what usually happens. It happened once, so it's going to happen again. Or, well, you should prepare for all of the problems so you have an answer. See all these little stupid programs, all these little thoughts that take up space in our head that override the system that is empowered and empower your heart, your feeling system. This is your absolute, Abraham Hicks calls it your guidance system. This is the numero uno transmitter and receiver of all that is. This is a vibrational life. We're on a vibrational planet. This thing is the transmitter and the receiver of vibration. And so if we have thinking that is so busy and so loud that overrides this system, we are in trouble. Because guess what? The heart is an electromagnetic engine that entrains the brain, an electric computer. Entrains means is in charge of. And if that sounds so foreign to you, think about when you go to the doctor. If you have your heart measured, or if you have your heart checked on and your brain waves, what do you have? Your, first of all, what do, you, what do you have checked on? Your heart waves, your brain waves, energetic waves, measured by an EEG and an EKG. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, waves, vibrations. <gasps> Snap, right? So here we have this system that's totally in charge. And it's hooked up to all that is. Like, if we learn to listen to it, 
We don't have to try to fix it or change it or do all the busy, stupid work that we do up here. Well, I think if I thought this or if I did this, it's so busy. It's so busy. It never takes a second off. Did you know that when you quiet this, you raise your vibration? Did you know that when you stop thinking, you raise your vibration? What's the highest vibration on the planet, boys and girls? Love. L-O-V-E, love. So starting to focus on the heart center and how we feel is the solution. It's the answer. It's the, it's the next step to the right way of living. And for many, people ask me all the time, how do I fall in love with myself? How do I get to meet myself? How do I um, learn what's going on in me? All these things, you know? And it's because we've been taught this other way to tune in and to connect and to assess, not to connect, I'm sorry, to assess. To assess and analyze, not to connect. Um, and it, 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 it tunes with the, it makes the wrong system the priority. The good news is, what I'm trying to say is, the, the system that's in charge is always hooked up to all that is. So it's always steady receiving messages, even if you're not consciously tuned into it. So if you wake up, you're like, I'm just going to be in a shitty mood. I'm just going to blah, 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 blah. Like, your heart is still like hooked up to all that is. That's the highest vibration. That's the good stuff. So you're still getting the good stuff. But if you could mm, consciously decide to let more of the good in and to let your heart receive more of the positive vibration, then imagine how much better it could be. Yes? So, um, for those just joining me, it's the new moon in Taurus. We're in Taurus season. I've just explained a whole lot about Taurus energy and why this is the ideal energy to change your day-to-day -day life. I was just saying, as human beings, we have a really hard time changing our thinking, okay? Because a lot of our thinking is so deeply entrenched and it's come from like generations before that just recite the same stuff. Sometimes we don't even know what we think about some things. It's just so like, I'll give you an example. Most every woman I know uses the same dish soap her mother does. Why? Mom did. You ever look at the ingredients? Is there something better? Is it okay for you? <laughs> Perfect time to set manifestations. Yes. We're going to do a manif- Hi, Mama. We're going to do a manifestation exercise today to use this energy because it is the perfect time. This is the fruit, right, for the picking. That's Taurus season. It's crops. It's harvest. It's mmm. Picking those yummy fruits that taste so good, that are so beautiful, that feel so delicious and nourishing coming into your vessel and your field and your body and your home. So... Because our, brain, our brains are so busy, because we're programmed to think, 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 we forget how to feel, 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 feel. So one of the ways that, one of the biggest ways that I help people get in touch with their feeling system is to teach them to become aware of their senses. Like, you know, it's funny. Kids are so aware of how they feel. And the kids that are super aware of how they feel, we have words for them, right? Like, like they can't keep it together in public or like, you know, oh, she's super feeling. She's a high feeler. We have stupid ass terms for them now, like um, high sensory and stuff like that. If you ask me, it should be called authentic humanity. And the rest of the engineering has dumbed down your senses and ability to tune into all that they are tuning into. Now, granted, the vessel that's too much sensory to function has to be tempered. But there's a happy medium in there where we're learning to allow what naturally comes to us in our feeling space instead of escaping to our brain to analyze, to judge, to make sense of. Right now, we have Uranus and Taurus. Taurus is so packed right now. We've got Jupiter. We've got Uranus. Who else is here? Um... Oh my God, who else is in, like, uh, Venus is in Taurus. Um, no, oh, is Venus in Taurus right now? I didn't check before I got on here. The, um, this, the moon is here. We've got so much energy focused in Taurus, and we just had Uranus aspecting Jupiter, which is, um, this is a really, like, lame way of saying it, but expanding the crazy. But the crazy is not bad. When Uranus is in Taurus, we are being taken to a higher way of living 
but we're being taken rather quickly. I tell people Uranus is the elevator for your elevation. Uranus is so intense. It doesn't care if you have a nosebleed on that elevator ride. Uranus wants to get your ass there, right? Uranus is like, let's grow. Let's go to the highest. Let's embody a higher vibration so that we can have a better quality of life. That's basically what that means in Taurus. So, uh, what else here? New moons. Let's just go there real quick. You got two moons a month. Did you know that the moon is the aspecting factor of all of the water on the planet? 72% water, just like your body, right? So the moon it influences the tides on this planet, the oceans, and every water body on the planet, which is all of us. So with the new moon, there is energy lent to plant new seeds. The moon itself, if you go outside, you might see her tonight. I don't think we'll see a crescent. I think it will be tomorrow because she was just new last night. So when the new moon is here, when you go out into the sky, you can't see the moon. She is obscured from our conscious view. Hmm, what's that mean? It means that we are being invited to go into our, our unconscious, our feeling, the things that we keep inside that maybe we're not even aware that we're operating in right? And with that, it's the time to plant the new seed. When we plant that new seed and you stick it in the ground, you can't see it yet, right? And so we're going to plant these new ideas deep inside us so that when by the time the full moon comes, not this next full moon, but this is the process in a very abbreviated way, full moons are for harvesting and illuminating. Once you've grown your crops for the right amount of time, the full moon would give us a beautiful light to go outside and to be able to see those crops, how we've planted, how we've tended to our crops, and then give us the ability to harvest. It illuminates our work or lack of. So with this new moon, we can plant seeds about how we think about our daily life. And it's pretty easy to do if you can understand that you can bring the Venus qualities of the senses into this um it into a, into a, a, a manifestation exercise. So the key here is going to be to let go of the old, which I personally find extremely challenging, you guys. Um, I guess I feel like, I don't know. You know, the way I was raised, I'll speak for myself, is like, pay attention, to, get your head out of the clouds and pay attention to what's in front of your face. Well, there's a problem there. Well, pay attention to it. I've been paying attention to it. I don't have the answers. Well, damn it, focus. <laughs> Still nothing, you know. Um, I learned that when Einstein got stuck, he would play the guitar. Uh, when I get stuck, I dance. And I know, and it was just funny because I create movement, kinetic energy in my body. I didn't know that's why I was doing it before. Um... When we try to force um, a solution like that, it doesn't come. Our brains cannot solve a problem with the current status quo information. The receiver that receives the impulses of creativity that become the ideas of focus start from the, from the heart. So... It is better if the problem is in front of you to take a break from it and to soothe your innards and then try to readdress. So I share that because for me, I can't sometimes stop the momentum of the problems that I've had in my past. I seem to um, entertain or I seem to have the ability to really focus on them and they'll come back up and I'll find myself thinking about them. And I'm like, dude, that happened two years ago. You don't have to think about that now. Like, you don't have to be sure that that's going to happen again. And the thing is, even if the things look probable, like they'll repeat themselves. I'm brand new energy. There's brand new energy on earth every day. How silly of me to limit my expansion, my elevation, and my opportunity. Do you feel me? Human Heather limits it. God doesn't. The earth doesn't. Evolution itself doesn't. Human Heather gets focused on the past. And then human Heather can't be in the present. So, I trick myself with manifestation exercises and my conscious focus, like we're going to do in just a little while, um, to help me rewire my brain. And I've been doing it now for a really long time. And it was funny because when I was starting this reading, I was thinking, how funny. 
I finished school with my son today. You know, he had surgery recently, so he's home. Um, but I homeschool my child, and I'm here in my home doing a reading with y'all. And this is the life I wanted. And I remember when this life sounded cockamamie crazy about a decade ago, when I was deep in the system, and um, on the nine to five grind, you know? And I wanted this life. It seemed so far-fetched. So I tricked my brain. I tricked my believing into thinking I could be this and have this before I did. Well, here I am. Here I be. So the process works. Um, the reason it works is we are energetic creatures and a law of attraction vibration. And our vibration draws that which is like us onto us. So if we have a positive, favorable outlook, the chances of drawing positive, favorable experiences to us become very great. If we have a jaded, I can't believe this happened before, I'm so focused on an outlook, the idea of drawing that to you is high. And in my case, I want none of that. So, let's have a reading. Lots of fluids. <laughs> The other thing I wanted to say is um, you got to feel it to heal it. But the thing is, once you feel it, you got to heal it. You can't stay stuck in that, right? Um, I had a story to share with you, but I don't want to make this too awful long. I think I'll share the story separately at a different time. But so often on earth, we feel like when circumstances happen and they're uncomfortable or we don't like them, it's bad. I was speaking with a woman today. This is the story I wanted to share, but it's just kind of, I don't want to make this all too long right now. I'll share it at a separate time. This woman lost her daughter. Okay? How do you possibly make that into something beautiful? I'll tell you how you make it into something beautiful. You make it into something beautiful because every single occurrence and circumstance that happens on earth is beautiful. And it's for your highest evolution and your highest growth and your highest learning. And it's always that way. And that is the gospel truth. I am connected to a power of goodness, of benevolence, of love, of connection that is greater than anything that anyone has ever described to me or told me about. I can feel it. I can feel its presence in every living thing. And... As my connection has become greater and my relationship has become stronger, my understanding of how things happen and that I have an ability to choose that it's for me has grown magnanimously. I suppose you could call that faith. You could call it living life on life's terms. You could call it acceptance. You could call it allowance. But the beauty of it is Everything always happens for our highest good, no matter what it is. I was telling the woman today of a woman who, a woman who got pregnant. The woman wasn't happy with her life and she didn't like herself. But when the baby came within her, she was so excited about the baby and she was so excited about bringing a life into the world. And, uh, she did not have love for herself, but she spared her destruction of self while she was pregnant. And then when the baby came, the baby died. And she said, dear God, what did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this? And in her anguish, her heart broke and she was able to connect to a power greater than herself for the first time. It is my understanding that energy is always in motion, always in play, always moving, always changing, and always in service. You see, that's the thing that is certain. It's always moving forward. It doesn't go backwards. It doesn't regress. It's always expanding, never contracting. And so if the soul comes to another soul in service to bring the gift of love and connection 
past what one would have been able to feel without that circumstance, dear God, is there any more righteous gift? Is there any more righteous gift? That's beautiful to me. It is an allowance and an acceptance to understand that everything that happens, happens for us. But should we choose to accept that right now, then we will get to let go of the old beliefs and behaviors and paradigms and allow the new. Do you hear how many times I keep saying allow the new? Allow, allow. Watch this video again sometime and count how many times I say allow. That's the hardest principle on earth right now. We know how to restrict. We know how to resist. We know how to protest. We know how to fight. We know how to gear up. We know how to uh uh. Do you know how to allow? Because there's a steady stream of goodness pouring to us like a fountain of beauty just coming down. And all we got to do is allow that we want some and take our cup and fill up each day. But most of us are like... I don't think that I'm good enough to go stand on the thing or I don't think my cup is really pretty or, you know, I don't know, my trip on the way looks stupid. And yet, there's this fountain. Should we allow it to come to us? We're the ones that cut ourselves off from the flow. Let's we'll see what our reading says. The Eight of Pentacles is our focus. <laughs> Sip water, do work, put fuel on the fire. In this card, um, the Eight of Pentacles, he is undergoing um, a new way of study. Um, it, this is a Hindu rite, and the monk is um, taking a young monk underneath him, and he is learning a new way of, um, of being. He's going to learn a new way of being. And I remember, there's a certain part, I don't remember the words, um, the names of these certain uh, rites that they go through for this ceremony, but at the end of this ceremony, the monk says to him, that is your work now. He says, sip water, do work, and put fuel on the fire. I love that. The energy presenting for us, oh my goodness, is the Six of Pentacles. This card is about community and connection. Interesting, both of these references so far. We'll see where we go with this, but... This card is, um, these monks right here, you see, the monk in any society, he is a uh, fountain of fecundity. He is fed by and feeds the community. This In this card, the monk right here, he is putting forth, forth his bowl. His bowl is in his hands, and in that, he expects to be fed by the community. What that noise was. Are you okay? Hey! Hold on. I told y'all my son had surgery, so I just need to make sure I don't hear something funny. Hey, are you okay? All right. Hey, are you okay? 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 Hey, to the community. See, he's in meditation. So this is about being fed by and feeding our community. To me, this is conductivity and connection. Excuse me. The Whoa, pentacles, pentacles, holy cannoli. The energy that we want to embody is the nine of pentacles. She's a self-made woman, an entrepreneur. This woman, a nine is um, the understanding of a cycle. Um, the knowing the ability to manifest. The ten, 10 is completion, so it's not done. In this one, she understands now. She understands how to take her assets, her gifts, her qualities, and put them into play. And the outcome of that, holy cannoli, you guys, we got pentacles in every single, this is wild, wild. We got the four of wands and the princess of pentacles. So in that... That is the ability to gestate new beliefs and new ideas that are coming to fruition. She's pregnant. The baby's coming, for sure. Right? She's ripe. She's fertile. She's so able to bring the nurture and the balance. Yes? And coupled with that is the Four of Wands. 
the recognition of being set on a path, having chosen the possible harder path aligned with our passions, we have created inevitably a successful balanced outcome. Four to me is like a table with four legs, very balanced, easy to manifest. The energy for us to embody is the king of pentacles. Y'all saw me draw the cards and you saw me shuffle. Let me put this all together. Let me finish going through there. I'm, I'm really like, whoa, that is just, you couldn't pull better. You couldn't pull better. Our goddess card is Kuan Yin. Ugh, compassion. Compassion for self. This is going to make me cry. That was the buzzword. About the woman I was going to tell you about earlier. Maybe I should just go ahead and tell the story. Maybe I will. Kuan Yin says, Compassion is what's needed right now to help you release perfectionism and defensiveness. The purpose of compassion is to help reduce suffering in the world. So be mindful not to judge yourself or others too harshly as you stumble through life's obstacle course. In fact, tuning into the energy of compassion and kindness almost instantly eradicates the stirred up energy of controlling thoughts and knee-jerk behaviors. The Chinese goddess of compassion, Kuan Yin, offers a gentle nudge to ask yourself this question. What would kindness do in this situation? If you approach everything with that in mind, you will discover solutions and new paths unfolding before you. In fact, living with compassion as your guide really changes everything, right down to the products you buy and the food you eat. Today, make kindness a priority to yourself. The world will be a better place, and you will feel amazing as you see the miracles light up where you least expect them. <laughs> Damn. The synchronicity abounds. I'm going to have to share it with you all. The universe has my back. All right, so if I put this reading together, guys, <clears throat> and I'll tell you why I'm crying. <laughs> it's time to enter a new way of study. It's time to enter a new way of approaching life. We're ready to get on the path of our success. And so the energy to do that is the Six of Pentacles. We need to connect to our community. We need to feed and get fed by our community. Connection is so key here, okay? And the energy for us to embody, let's draw another card on this, is the Nine of Pentacles. This is the time in Taurus season where you go through, take stock, take stock. Like you would if you were on a farm and you were going to go out and plant. And you'd be like, well, I got the, I don't know all these terms. I got the till and I got this and I got this and I got this and I can do this and I can do this and I can't do that. Right now, what we have is what we're supposed to use. This is not the time right now where anything else is going to come in to change the game. This is where we look at our body, our being, our home, our neighborhood, our community, and we see what's going on there. And with that, what do we have? What do we have that we should work with? What do we have that we've already been seeding that is now growing more and allow it to step into the magic? This is a Sufi. He is the highest order of um, the Muslims. And he is literally dancing in drunken spirit. I don't mean he's drunk. I mean that he is so one with the spirit that he is like ah, dancing. Okay. Because he understands he has everything. He is backed by spirit. He's got all he needs. And in that, all he's got to do is gestate. All he's got to do is hold those seeds, water them. Like we were talking about, water them and tend to the garden every day. And then you have planted your future. Ha! By the way, mark this day on your calendar if you choose to participate in this reading 
and in our manifestation exercise. And then I want to know what you harvest in six months on the Taurus full moon. And our energy is the king of pentacles. There is nothing we cannot bring to fruition on this earth. That's what this means. Pentacles are earth. This is all about earth. This is all about Taurus. This is all about what we can bring on the earth. This isn't the wands. This isn't the cups of love in our heart. This isn't the air signs where we're like, well, I think, go think about it, go change your belief system. This is move your ass. Move your ass. Because you got what you need. And once you plant the seeds that allow you to believe, your future is secure. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you this story real quick. Then we're going to do our manifestation exercise. I've never shared this openly and honestly uh, in public before. Um, earlier today, uh, uh, let me tell you how I told her. Um, ever since I can remember, I can feel the field. And what I mean by that is every human being generates an electromagnetic field. This is not, this is not my opinion. This is the gospel truth. You make an energetic bubble around you. Um, each, each human has a field of approximately two meters in nature, depending on their conductivity. Some are much larger, some are smaller. So when I meet people, I can feel their field. Um, it's been that way ever since I can remember. Any living creature, animals, uh, humans. And so like when I was little, I would say to my mom, he thinks this or she thinks this. And, you know, sometimes people really don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, um... Then I closed it down for a lot of years with drugs and alcohol. <clears throat> then I opened it back up. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I opened it back up, it was stronger than ever. Um, and a little bit overwhelming to begin with. And when I would tell people, when I would try to tell some people initially about some of it, it was like weird for them. But... The time when it was never weird is uh, sometimes other people's bubbles pop in my bubble. And I don't go looking for their bubble. I don't go um, trying to connect with their bubble. Like when it happens like this, it's just there. And then I can feel this person's bubble. And I'm like, whoa. So today, this woman was in my bubble. Her bubble was in my bubble. I could feel her bubble. And... um. It was out of nowhere. I was actually getting ready to get in the shower. And out of nowhere, I could feel this woman's bubble. I haven't seen this woman in like 18 years. And since then, she lost her daughter. And um, the way it felt today was all of a sudden I thought of her. And then I thought of Mother's Day. Her and Mother's Day. And then... I was like, it doesn't come in chronological order like this. It's kind of all jumbled out. So me trying to put words on this whole process is really challenging. So just bear with me. There's no boom, boom, boom. Everything happens at once. <laughs> like everything is quantum. So I could feel her. I was aware it was Mother's Day and I could feel she's ready to heal. Or that's what it feels like to me. Healing. It feels like healing time. <laughs> and so... Then I couldn't breathe. Like, I absolutely couldn't breathe. Like, I couldn't catch my breath and I had to sit down. Like, I, I literally had to grab a towel and sit down and like, <gasps> like really try to slow my breathing down. And it was a lot. It was really a lot. And then I thought, damn, man, if I feel like this, just like I said to her, what the fuck does she feel like? So I sent her a message and I was like, this is totally random and out of nowhere, but I want you to know I love you and I'd like to know how you're doing. And then I sent a text right after that said, there's no off limits, you know, meaning, and I said, there's no too much. There's never too much for me. It's never too much. It's too much for a lot of people, not for me. And then I explained to her that um, the way it works for me is energy is energy. And 
I can feel the energy even when someone's here in physical form or when they're not here in physical form. It's like the field talks to me, tells me information. And, um, and so I was telling her how she was bas she basically sent a text that said when her daughter committed suicide, she was more concerned about everyone around her than she was about herself. That's my paraphrase. Those are my words. Because I don't want to use her words because they were her words about her situation. And I feel like that is um, special and sacred to the conversation. And so what I heard was, like I told you, like I just told you about the child being born to the mother. What I heard was, oh, a soul came in service and put skin on the sentiments and the belief systems that are poisoning the family. And then I told her the way I, the, the, the story that I used to, to explain this uh, often to people is I take a stereotypical mother that has four kids by three different guys. By the way, I have three kids by two different guys, so I ain't saying not nobody. Um, who has no help with those kids and is working four jobs and is exhausted and she has high blood pressure and heart disease and diabetes and gout. Now, that mother never sits her daughter down and says, who you want to be is not important. The gifts inside you, not important. Being beautiful, who gives a crap? What you want for yourself? Hang that up. Your life's about serving others. <laughs> Possibly to your expense. She never says that, does she? No. She probably says things quite the contrary. Like, you're a princess. And you can have anything you want and you're beautiful and I'm proud of you and you go after your dreams she probably says these things with her mouth right yes I would imagine I can see that mom sitting on the bed exhausted exhausted giving her daughter the verbal lesson but the thing is words don't teach as Abraham says and we are not a monkey listen, monkey learn species. We are monkey see, monkey do. So even though that, that mama's given the right words with her mouth, she is modeling different behavior that that child will inevitably pick up. Then when that little girl grows up, not making herself a priority, not putting herself first, and it puts labor and stress on her heart vessel. Because guess what? That does not align with her highest good. God wants her to be loved, wants her to put her vessel first, wants her to think highly of herself as she is a little spark of the almighty flame. And so her belief system and her behavior do not align with the calibration of the soul at its highest. And what's that look like? That's stress on the heart chakra. That's an imbalanced system. Right? So then that little girl who's grown up now has what? Heart disease, diabetes, gout, high blood pressure. And all the little humans run around going, it's hereditary. Really? You got new cells in your body every day. You're fresh and brand new from the rooter to the tutor in two years. You got a new skeletal system in like seven. To inherit a disease is impossible. To inherit, excuse me, to remodel energetic disease is probable until we become aware of our belief systems influencing our behavior. And since we are on an earth where God is and the earth is always forcing evolution and everything is about our highest good and our highest way of living souls come in service and put skin on the dis-ease 
and the family. They wear the energy. And then they present. They gift with the problem. So that you can see it. So that you can see it. And so I said to this woman today, it sounds like it's time to have compassion for yourself. She didn't mess up. She didn't mess up. Nobody messed up. This is the gift. The gift is she came and put skin on the problem, the lack of compassion for self. She did it to give you the ultimate gift of seeing where the Aoi is so you can heal it. And then when you heal it within yourself, you heal it for your whole family. Chances are that woman, the mother, had a mama who was the same way and modeled that same behavior. She never said to her child, to my friend, you're not that important. I imagine she said the contrary. But we very easily pick up the energetic disease in our family through the modeled behaviors until it flags our heart and it hurts and it breaks our heart and we say, I'm not doing this anymore. And so when I said to her today, it's time to find the compassion for self. She said, how funny that you used that word. She said, I typed that I needed to love myself, but she said I had written and erased compassion because I thought that love en encompassed that. She said, but you picked the exact word. And then I said, that's synchronicity. That's spirit talking to you. That's spirit talking to you. And here I told you I was going to tell that story. And then I draw this card about compassion. Compassion for yourself. What would kindness do? Because the thing is, if you can let go of the old and allow the new, then nothing is in vain. It's never in vain. It's energy moving forward. And then that baby, that young girl who came and gave the ultimate gift to her mother can transmute the energy, can transmute the energy and free her heart, breaking the walls down that create the disease in the body because it first starts as energetic disease. Isn't that beautiful? My manifestation exercise for you today um let me make sure there wasn't something else i wanted to tell you about that i think that was it um oh and so then after we had this talk and i told this woman i said this is hard shit to say to somebody you know i said but if it if it brings us to the light and we can come in the light and heal the hurts i'll say it i'll say it <laughs> And not only did she hear me, she said, I think it's time to heal. And then I said to her, I got one more thing to tell you. It's the Taurus new moon. And so if you can allow yourself to open the door here and let go of some of the ways that you have been viewing this, not the pain, I don't expect her to let go of the pain like that I, I'm asking can you open the door and instead of saying I'm not opening the door and I'm not because this is what she's saying she says I'm not ready to feel yet and I said I understand that but if you're open the door if you're if you're willing to open the door and feel it you can heal it because if you can feel it in that magical heart center you can transmute the energy breaking down the energetic walls that look like high blood pressure and heart disease and gout and diabetes, etc. And your vessel can return to optimum balance, vibration and pressure and you heal your family. So for our manifestation exercise, I have come up with something so, so easy um, that will, I think is really, really fun. Um, I, I did this with my son today um, I've done it with a few other people, and so I decided to come and share it with y'all here because it's easy and it's fun and it's guaranteed to work if you work it. So, super easy. Okay, the whole deal about manifestation is, like I told you, we manifest from our heart center, not our brain. So, in a really brainiac 
um, population where people are running around, especially once they're inundated with books like The Secret and, um, excuse me, what's that other one that everyone's always buzzing about? They're like, they're like, I'm trying to, oh, uh, what is that phrase? I can't think of it right now. Oh, the, the, like the law of attraction stuff and, and, and people are like, um, I'm thinking about this and, you know, I'm focused on this, but most often they're focused on what they want from a lack standpoint, from a deficient standpoint. Very few people are capable, I think, of holding a vibration of a favorable outlook on what they don't yet have. Make sense? Meaning like, if you, if you want a new car, and why do you want a new car? Because your old ones broke down. You want a new job because your, because your existing one sucks, right? Or you want a lover because you're lonely as shit, okay? So when you're thinking about it that way, it's coming from what you don't have. If you want a lover because you've become who you want to be and you want to share this abundant, benevolent beauty, you're going to attract quite the mate, right? But if you are focused on really, I, need, I just really want to have someone in my life because I'm so lonely, then you're probably going to get a shit show. <laughs> so... Trying to manifest from our brain, from thinking, doesn't really do us a good thing until our heart is in a, a calm and mm, balanced and happy place, okay? So, I have something super fun and easy for you today, and it's calming, and it's fun. <laughs> Just think about that, because that's when you manifest what you want, when you're having fun, and you're not like wound up about it. So, and you're going to want to do this tonight, okay? You're going to want to do this exercise tonight um, because the moon um, will shift out of the sign and we won't be able to um, capitalize on this energy the same. So go ahead and do this tonight, but you can also, you know, take this forward. This is a, this is a good way to see a situation differently, all right? But for tonight, I would love for you to sit and write me a letter. I would love for you to write me a letter about how amazing your day was today. And in that letter, I would like for you to include what you smelled, what you tasted, what you saw, what you heard, and how something felt against your skin. If you're not sure where to begin with that letter or how to draft the letter, You can, in your imagination, come sit with me next to a tree. That is where I love to be. Sit with me right next to me, shoulder to shoulder, underneath a great big tree with huge roots that are like coming out our side so they're supporting us like our own little couches. And then the tree is huge and grows up magnificently with branches that grow out ginormously and beautiful leaves and sunshine that shines on our face. And when that breeze that jostles the leaves just a little bit comes through, we can feel it in our hair just a little bit and against our cheeks just a little bit, maybe our clothes blow just a little bit. And mm, I don't know, maybe we smell flowers. Maybe you smell the bark of a tree. I remember in Colorado, there was these pine trees that smelled like caramel. And vanilla, if I remember correctly. And I used to run around smelling the trees. <laughs> it's a great visual. <laughs> so, when we do this, the reason you're going to do this is, this, I'm going to tell you what you're doing here. Write this letter. And when you write this letter, if you want, send it to me in a direct message. Even better. Write me a letter telling me about your your day today. And, and I want you to, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're drafting your ideal day. Okay, but you're going to write it in the first person present as if it happened. Like, oh my gosh, Heather, sitting with you in the tree today was amazing. I love the way the flowers smelled. And oh, when that breeze came and your hair flowed and, my, and it tickled my nose, that made me giggle. And I loved the feeling in my belly. Do you see how descriptive that is? Do you see how you could have just hearing that been right there with me? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... You're going to write me a letter. You're going to tell me about your afternoon today. And you're going to tell me how amazing it was. And you're going to put in there some of the details that you'd really like to have going on in your life. And in that, I want you to focus on your senses. And I want you to keep it so simple. We're sitting next to each other in a tree. All right? 
So what are you going to bring there? Maybe you got a, like a new invention. Maybe you got a new person. I don't know. But like, tell me about that. Okay. Tell me about my son did it and um, he had some creatures crawling on him that he was interested in. He found that he had these magical thoughts in his head. Um, so real simple, just sit down and when you write the letter, when you actually draft the letter, what you're doing is you are taking, let me show you, you are taking energy <clears throat> out of the ethereal and you are alchemizing into matter form. Did you know that? You are telling the universe, this is what it be. Mm -hmm. And I'm down. And I know when I write this down, you're down with me. I know you're going to double down on my efforts because you love me. Because... Spirit is listening. You see, she is pulling that. This is She's a seer. She is pulling it out of the clouds. This is Odin's advisor. That's his ravens. She was said to drink with Odin. So she's pulling it out of the clouds here. She's pointing at you. She's saying, you bring that down. And look, she's grounding it into the ground where the thought will become a thing. <clears throat> so when you write down on a piece of paper, what that day looked like. You are telling the universe, this is what it be. I'm down, I'm showing up. I recognize that you're gonna do the same. Then if you wanna send it to me, you are connecting to my field too and allowing me to double down on your success and your progress and your well-being. And just like this, the more we connect with community and allow others to love on us and us to love on them, the more we connect with community, the more successful we are, the more we are able to manifest the future of stability, of success, of our desires. Look at the rays of sun coming down in the middle of that. Beautiful. And all we have to do is create the beliefs. And we're going to do them in our letter. And then I'm going to teach you moving forward how to use that letter in the next few months, how to continue watering and tending to your crops so that come time to harvest, you are tickled with your progress. This is a beautiful time to allow ourselves to grow. Um, it's that time on earth, guys. It's pretty intense for everyone. Everyone is feeling the feels and receiving um, the healing. No soul is um, no soul is spared the evolution <laughs> so it's all the more reason too to show up for community and connect with others because people really need love right now and they really need connection by the way that owl on that moon is about divine feminine energy and that's also about this compassion for ourselves you see we live in a really out of whack kind of cockamamie crazy sacred masculine world where the sacred masculine aspect has been engineered to be conquering and the compassion has not been cultivated to be as important and we're learning now that we can't really just hit the gas pedal all the time and not have the same amount of compassion for performance as as our performance and and stay healthy you know it's funny too because like as an athlete and as a trainer i tell people all the time your body grows and changes in the recovery phase then grow when you're in the gym you get good by how you eat how you rest how you maintenance and take care of yourself and that's that's the time on earth right now we are learning to maintenance with compassion so that we can let go of old ways and allow the new because the new is beautiful benevolent, pretty, so nice. Um, it's that time on earth. The vibration is rising and we get to climb with it. Thank you for being here. Um, I am running a reading sale for about a week and a half until the full moon. Um, I'm actually doing a $50 one question reading right now. So you can get with me for one question and I will give you an intuitive reading. We'll put some astrology in there. Um, what, it, what, what do we do is you, you can say like if you uh, um, 
the one I had yesterday, she wants to know uh, what the next right step for her and her life path is. Um, so we can pull some cards. We can listen to what's going on in your field. And then I will give you some practical tools. Like maybe you need to eat this or stop eating that. Or maybe this behavior would be useful. Or maybe you need to lose that one. And then that can help get you on your path. So you can book one of those readings. Um, that sale will be good through the, I think the 22nd is the day before the full moon. Um, again, one question for $50. And um, it is a live reading. That's kind of cool for you, right? So we can do it on video. Um, I did put the link to my store below. Uh, I have all kinds of wonderful personal care products. All natural, organic, charged with scalar energy, making your body immune from Wi-Fi, cell phone, and ELF wave exposure for 2.5 days per application. Shazam. Yes. And then, um, y'all, please subscribe to my YouTube and then stay tuned. I have big announcements coming out this week about workshops and my beehive, my community where we all show up to be happy, healthy, and sexy together. And I am so excited. <laughs> so if you're interested in a reading, please shoot me a um, direct message or you can email me at, oh, where do I want you to email me? Uh, let's do I am the chiefess at gmail.com. All right. Other than that, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm grateful to be here with you on earth today. And I'm grateful to be having the ability to make some choices. Thanks for loving on me today. I love you. Y'all go join my YouTube channel and write a letter. Write a letter and send me your letter. And then we'll look forward to seeing how we grow in the next six months. Isn't that cool? Because we have a full moon six months opposite this new one. And we'll be able to, and our harvest will be illuminated. Thank you for being here. I love you. Ah! <laughs>